Today, I would like to tell you about flat lays. Flat lays, it's a fun little thing that I've learned how to do. I don't know if I'm the best at it, but I, I, I'm practicing. I'm trying to get better each and every day, every time that I do it. But I'd like to share with you about how to do a flat lay, as well as maybe why flat lays are kind of cool and good, and you should use them for your products and stuff. Or just, you know, a good tool you can learn to use to sell other people's products. Let's do that. So a company that I have mentioned before on this YouTube channel is Pistol Lake. And why is Pistol Lake significant? Well, I wear their clothes in pretty much every single YouTube video that I've put out uh, in the past year. I'm wearing the clothes right now. Um, but I do work for Pistol Lake. I, I actually do some product photography for, for bleh, pro <laughs> I do product photography for them. And that's actually where and how I learned to do flat lay photography. Um, so I'm gonna show you now, I'm gonna stop blabbering, but if you'd like to get some Pistol Lake stuff yourself, I believe the code slacker15 or something like that, I'll put it on the screen and the link will be in the description. You can get 15% off or some percentage off your first order. I don't get a kickback from them. They're just really dope and they've been good to me um, by sending me work. So definitely check them out if you haven't already. So the first thing that you're gonna need when you're doing fly lay photography, besides the actual thing you're photographing, as well as the camera itself, is some sort of white backdrop. Now, I have one of these cool seamless setup things, um, but you don't actually need a fancy setup in order to do this. All you need is just a blank white piece of paper. Um, I, it does kind of have to be a little bit big, but I'm sure you could sort of, you know, tape a bunch of pieces of paper, piece of paper, but I'm sure you could just tape a bunch of white pieces of paper together to achieve the same sort of effect. This is the first step we need, so I'm gonna set that up now. All right, so now we've got our big, beautiful backdrop going on, and next up we need some lights. It doesn't need to be the brightest lights, it just needs to be some even lighting. All right, lighting is set. Next, let's do the camera. I know some of you probably don't have the same sort of setup that I do. I have this little platform that I've shown you many different times before. So it's pretty easy for me to attach something to get an overhead shot. Uh, but you don't necessarily need to have a fancy setup to get these overhead shot type things. You can actually achieve the same effect if you have just paper flat on the floor and you stand over it and you take pictures that way. It's a little more uneasy because you kind of have to get the same sort of frame with every picture that you take and make sure you're not, there's not drastic angle differences or heights or whatever whenever you're taking those pictures, but it can be done. For this, for these flat lays, I'm actually using my G7 and I'm going to connect via Wi-Fi so that I don't actually have to touch the camera when I'm actually taking pictures and I can control everything from here. Plus, I'll be able to record the screen and show you the different settings that I use. <laughs> okay, this is a lot to set up, but um, hopefully you can see what I'm looking at right now. So I've got the camera up. It's not directly perpendicular to the surface right here, but it is, you know, approximately like that. So we've got our shirt and the first thing that I do so I put it in here, help it get a little bit of focus. As we can see, it's a little bit, just a little bit dim. So it looks like the frame could be just a little bit brighter. Do that. So I definitely tried taking photos where the piece of clothing is just lying flat. Um, but what I found actually looks a, just a little bit better. It gives it that extra, extra zhuzh, that extra, extra oomph is, um, those are technical terms, by the way. You're, you're welcome to use them yourself. Is I actually stuff the shirt a little bit. So it doesn't actually look like it's being worn, but it doesn't look like it's empty either. It's kind of like that, it's like a ghost's wearing it, a spooky ghost. So this is a certified spooky ghost method for taking pictures. So what I use is I have this packing paper that you typically get like at a, um, like a shipping store or something like that. I just used paper that I actually 
got when I ordered something, um, but I also have some tissue paper in here. This is some used paper for, not, not like used, used. So I start with it kind of laid out flat like this. And now really I just kind of stuff it. So this looks, this looks kind of ridiculous, I know. But I will flatten it out now and make it a little less dramatic. So one little, one little extra thing that I like to do is I've got this little towel right here and I put that in here like so. And it just kind of gives it a nice little, rather than just slump over, um, it gives it a nice little fall off there. I will say this is absolutely the uh, most excruciating part because it's just kind of making sure it looks as normal as possible. It doesn't look too poofy, but it looks like it's got some depth. So next I fold the sleeves over. It's not looking too bad. Well, there's this, this chunk right here. It's looking all right. It's looking okay. Just wanna fix this a little bit. How's that? Not bad, not bad at all. Okay, so I wanna make sure that's in focus. It's somewhat centered and we are going to take a picture. Wow. Um, and next I just kind of like to do a little bit of variance, like just for safety, just making sure that I got a basis covered in case there's some random little seam that I didn't see. Just wanna be extra careful. It's looking just a little bit dark from the eye test. I'm gonna brighten it up a smidge. All right, so I think we're good taken a bunch of different photos. Um, the settings that I'm using for this, I'm shooting in RAW so that I can have some extra um, little stuff that I do later. I'm shooting a uh, 3-2 ratio, so like the, just the most I can get out of it. It's okay that you can see this extra stuff on the side. All right, so now that we've got everything shot, I'm gonna show you how we get everything set up in Photoshop and then ready for it to be displayed on a Shopify or uh, some other website that you use to display your different photos. I'm gonna open up Adobe Branch. and navigate to our photos, of course. I'm just gonna only select the camera raw stuff. And basically, I just wanna find the one that I think looks the best. One thing I do actually enjoy about this method is they don't look perfect. They don't look like pristine. I mean, if you want them to look pristine, like by all means go for that. But I think this is just kind of a realistic look at like, maybe you'd see it on like a mannequin or something like that. So let's start with this one that we got right here. Open that up in Photoshop, double clicking. This is an area that I will admit I am definitely not a skilled person in. Um, if you want to find a better tutorial on that, I definitely suggest looking elsewhere. I just kind of do what I feel is right. I don't know if, it, if it's necessarily the right move, but this is just what I do. So first things first is I did do the white balance um, in camera, but I like to just kind of use this dropper over here and get a little more accurate representation of that white balance. Sometimes, I'll do auto settings for this. I mean, it looks pretty good, I think. I could be a heathen, I could be breaking all sorts of photography rules right now, but I personally just kind of like, you know, it looks pretty good. And honestly, if you're just doing it for yourself, do what looks best for you. Um, if you have a client and they have suggestions, uh, edits that you have to make, of course, that's always gonna be a factor. But if you're just doing it for yourself, I think just, you know, do what looks best for you. So like I said, I do auto and then I kind of futz with it just a little bit. I like to make it pretty sharp, um, especially because we're going to be technically scaling this down later. Hitting P to see before and after. Not bad, not bad at all. All right, now I'm gonna save this as a Photoshop file and I'm gonna do version one. So we've got that basic version. All we've done is, you know, adjusted the raw settings. Now I'm going to save again version two. And now what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the shirt. Now you can use different things like there's the magic wand tool, the, you know, magic selection, stuff like that. Those are fine. I've used them before, but I like to get a little more accurate. So I like to use the pen tool and I just kind of draw inside of the actual piece of clothing here. You'll see why I do that a little bit later. 
So when I get down here, I'm not actually gonna use the back of the shirt. I just wanna use the front of the shirt and that shouldn't look too unnatural as you'll see once we have the actual finished product. Kind of do the same thing here with the seam. Um, I don't actually wanna see that seam as I think it looks a little bit cleaner in the final, final picture. And I'm really, in some areas more than others, I'm cutting into the fabric. I think it ends up with a little bit of a better result. So I've got my selection here. What I'm gonna do, right click, make selection. I'm gonna do feather radius one, enter, and I hit command J, and boom. We've got our cutout here. That's that's kind of what I was mentioning before about um, I'm not too worried with being like exact um, because I think you get some really nice imperfections that end up happening. But it's kind of like a blend in a way of like quality and imperfections. None of this makes sense. Come on, just move on, Ben. OK, so we've got our cutout here and I'm actually going to do a couple of more things. Uh, I noticed there's some things here like, uh, I don't know if that's like dandruff or something, but I'm just gonna use the spot healing brush and get that out of there. I don't like to overuse this because um, I think it actually does mess with the image, but just kind of little areas where I see these little pieces. Of course, I should probably <laughs> be better at like lint rolling before I do it. All right, so I just saved this again and now we're gonna put it into its final little home here. So I've got this template project and this is, I mean, it's 4,000 by 4,000. What you can do really is you can just do new 4,000. This is pretty much uh, what I got right here. If you want to follow my settings, this is the image that I made right here, um, but I've already got it created right here. And what I'm going to do is I've got this template. I'm going to save it uh, over this, call it version three. Then I'm going to take this image here and I'm going to paste it in here, I'm going to copy the layer style from this guy, paste that in there. Editor Ben here. It occurs to me that I forgot to put the specs of the drop shadow on the screen. This is what I use, but feel free to use whatever settings make you happy. Whatever looks good to you. Delete that other one. And then I've got this little rectangle here that basically is what I'm stretching all of the different um, articles of clothing into to fit into so that everything's kind of uniform when you see it on the website. But you're not actually going to see this red box in the final image. So I'm going to rescale this guy. I've got some guiding lines here. I'm going to make sure, first of all, it's centered. And then I'm going to scale it up to size right here. There we go. Perfect. OK, so there you go. And then what I do, final little step, file, export, export as. Um, and I want it to be 1080 by 1080 because I believe that's like the Shopify standard or something. You can copy these settings here, export that, name it, you know, blue shirt and boom and save that right there. And then there we go. That's how you make some uh, flat lay images that sort of pop out and don't look super flat. Um, and it's great for displaying the different products you have, whether it's shirts, whether it's uh, hacky sacks, uh, stuff like that. I don't know. I'm not good at thinking of examples. Thank you so much for watching, and I, of course, will see you next time. I'll be here next time. I fucked it up again.